can't believe it. You really can't believe how lucky we are to get what we've got. It was all uh, dust, um, coal dust on the windows. Where I live, you could wipe your windowsills, it would be black. Ever such a lot of dust. It was a case of windows had to be cleaned every week and odd all that, you know, when they were there. Because the, the, uh, the dirt from the collieries. We used to have terrific fog and smog. All to do with pits and the um, pork yards and all that sort of crap. Uh, so much so that the, the fogs were that thick, you literally couldn't see your hand there. And uh, of course, that was yellow. The, the, the air was yellow. The overall environment was very dirty. The roadside and the houses were spattered with with clay mud and all kinds of things. So it was a, a generally a, a not a very pretty area. Now you wouldn't recognise it from from today. All of this, this was like all these trees weren't here, like. 15 years ago and now they've all grown. It hasn't really changed that much but then you see photos of it when it was stuff was first here and you, then you notice how much it has actually changed in your lifetime but like because like you always say you don't really see it happening. We didn't realise that it used to, what it used to be when we first moved here it was just it was just like oh we're surrounded by woods we live in the woods it's nice. The blackness, it's blacker than ink, it really is. There's no blackness like it. There's no chink of light, there's nothing. You can have the blackest night going, but it's not as black as down there. When you pick your lamp up and your self-rescuer, they also give you two tallies, an oval one and a square one. When you've got your lamp on and like you fill your water bottle and you're ready to go on the cage, you hand the oval one to the on-setter. All the while, that goes back to the time office then and it tells them that you've gone in the pit. When you come up the pit, end of the shift, you hand the square one in. That tells them that you've gone in the pit and you're out of the pit and you're safe. Heavy piece of equipment. It's a borer. What we used to do, we used to have drill rods ranging from sort of three foot long, five foot long, eight foot long. And basically what you do, put in the borer like this, you'd have a cable ranging from 50, more than 100 metres in length. Make sure the drill bit's locked. Then pick it up. And then what you've got to do is get it up, up on your shoulder. Get it up into the end, and then basically you drill. You, you put your, your stem in at the back, make sure that's in. Then your powder all in, and then your stemming plug at the front. Make sure you don't snag your detonator cable and snap it, because if you do, you get a misfire, and then you've got problems. You've got to dig it out. It's called collar and aims. This is the collar fit over the horse's head, and this is the tackle for pulling. You used to think quite a lot of your ponies. They were looked after better than the miners, really. If you injured your pony, you had to go and see the manager. And they say, that's cost you 10 shillings. He says, that pony's cost me 40 pound. I've got you for nothing. And that's how they used to talk to you then, yeah. When you're going out on a Saturday night, yeah. you say, we're going to get your collar and aims on. They say, we're going out today. It's just like tackling your pony, you're tackling yourself up. This is the bug of eternal stench and it stinks and then if you fall in it, you stink for eternity. When me and Isaac fell in, we were walking across that log, but we walked across it loads now. And then we tried to oh, jump, we tried to jump and we fell in. We used to like it in the spinny because we shouldn't have been in there. We used to get in trouble for going in there because it was quite uh, boggy. And I remember going in there one, once with my sisters and um, it got me thought and got wellies on and it went in like the mud. And I pulled my foot out my welly was stuck in the mud and uh, my mum weren't very happy. <laughs> so I got told off for that. 
Yeah. And it looks it looks really shallow, but then it's just really muddy. Although in some ways the collieries m m left a a greater blot on the landscape, if you like. Um, there are actually more people employed in the pipe yards than there were in the collieries. The yards themselves were were never clean places. You know, the, the concepts of health and safety and so on were very uh, underused. It was far more preferable to be outside uh, than the inside. I was transferred once inside, and it, it was just like something out of a Dickens novel. It was horrendous. Some of the old hands on the pipe yard used to taste the clay to get an idea of the chemical composition of it. It was very much an old craft industry uh, and there would there'd just be a feeling oh this this clay this mix isn't right it needs a bit more of this or a bit more of that and it was almost like a an old-fashioned alchemist. In the mid the early mid 60s onwards the uh, the technology as much as anything uh, was in decline. This is your tree house. This is my tree house. Or was. This was my tree house. Here. Until someone got it rid of it. Did they burn it down? Me and my brother, one summer holiday, we built a big tree house in this tree with a load of planks and then some older teenagers burned the planks in the swing. is a, a forest up to the left of us where all the trees there are sort of like dead and they're like I don't know because all the leaves fall to the ground so it's really fun to run about in and the trees sort of like really um like uh, fall over and stuff so you can just push them over and it's really fun with part they go like whoosh, and then they hit the ground but it's like a place in the forest because we don't want to like vandalise any like forest stuff but it's a place in the forest where you can run around and be as like um, you know, as uncareful as you want and not actually damage anything. This is the mainstay of the colliery up and down the country and it's mainly used for uh, testing for gas. The dangers of, of me methane is, is that we're, we're talking about at the time when uh, men were working with pick, pick and uh, shovel and of course when they were working they were not aware uh, of uh, any gas that was, uh, that was uh, about. Methane gas which we're looking for is lighter than air and it always makes its way to the highest point and of course if we can't get up there with the flame safety lamp then of course we use the stick and the aspirator bulb and fetch it down from the highest point, insert it inside the flame safety lamp and from then onwards wind the, the, the wick down to a testing point, press the aspirating ball between one and seven seconds and that way we can get an accurate reading if there's any gas up there. That's the lamp that, uh, that does the job, which is uh, used today. It was an eye-opener. My husband was a policeman, so I'd never worked in anything like this. He heard there was a job coming up, and he asked me, because we were going into buying our own house. I was picked up in the morning, uh, hopper spool, quarter to five, by a cobord driver. He'd got another lady with him, the two of us went down to uh, get the canteen ready for opening. Two pence for a slice of bread, a mug of tea, three pence, a mug of coffee, five pence, two slices of bacon, a piece of dry bread, an egg, and a portion of tomatoes. Fifteen pence. Yeah, this is it. This is big. There's a little park and a big park, and a little park, we all, if you were from Little Park, you didn't like big park people, you were against them. 
when we were younger, it was literally like my second home. Like we used to go up there all the time, and we literally like used to go up and we used to make it into like we used to have our little own bedrooms and used to like have stairs and. There was a thinking wall at Big Den, which is where we used to go sit with jugs of juice and cups, and we just shared it out. And we used to sit there, and someone would stand on the stone, which we which was in front of it, and we called that the thinking stone. And if you were on there, everyone else had to be quiet, sitting on the wall, and they would share their ideas for the den. So we used to carpet the ground with grass inside the den, so it was a bit more homely, and we would like. Everyone had a different job for the den. We spent ages up here, but then another group of people would always come and trash it, basically. But it, obviously it wasn't our den. That's when we had the idea to put a wall around it so no one <laughs> could come and touch it. Also, there was this little sleeping bag here someone had left. And we always used to think there was someone living here. So it would only come more or less in the day, because we'd fought at night someone would come and sleep, but I don't think that ever happened. I left school early. I was going to go to Burton Tech. I got about three months in between, so I found a job, and I found a job at Moira Pottery. My mum and dad met at Moira Pottery after the war. Um, my mum, during the war, they had prisoners of war that worked there. Italians. Um, then she met my dad because my dad was in the war and uh, they got married. They gave me a job of making corks out of clay and I had to go to the pug room where I'd get a, a lump of clay, bring it back, get a fistful, make it into a cone, put it in, the, in this press, swing the press round with a weight, come down, bang, and it to make a cork in clay and then I'd have to unscrew it from the, the thread bit and put it on the wooden plank and I must have made thousands and thousands of them. Uh, my mum was um, either they used to call them slappers or throwers and they used to throw the clay onto these slabs but they were always standing in cold water and wet floors it, weren't very pleasant. It employed a lot of women, yeah. local and local, you, you know, people. The wages, I don't think they were terrific, but it was a happy place to work at. Yeah. Some people call it the brook. Yeah, I call it the brook. Just, some people just call it the stream. Call it the brook. Little tiny fish down there. Okay. You know, just wait and try and catch them. Where? Like down. Oh, I've walked through that. I've probably killed some fish. That's a bit worrying now. I know. We always walk through it. Have you tried going down that way? Yeah, that way is really deep yeah. when it gets down. I've got stuck. Higher than welly height. Because after school, we'd go down to the stream nearby and um, we'd explore there and go with wellies on and I remember going down once and I started to sink in the mud <laughs> and I had to dig myself out right up to the top of my wellies and then my friend started to sink as well and then she started to cry so I had to dig her out as well and then I was going further and further and all my friends were shouting leave it leave it you need to leave your welly but I couldn't leave it as it was my mum's welly <laughs> and it was her hunters, her hunters as well so I know she would have gone mad at me where she did. I've got the perfect few sticks. I kind of take my heart off enough to what they have done and what they've achieved. Um, having said that, they need to support the place. I'm happy. I'm happy with it. I didn't like it. I don't like some of it. These big housing estates I don't like. Because they, they were forced on us, the big housing estates. There's plans to renovate the car park, the car park down there to change it into a housing estate, which I don't really like, to be honest. Because 
there are two routes into the forest there and I doubt they'll preserve either of them because they're not official footpaths. I learnt to ride on that car park. I used to take my sister and her friend down there and do roller skating and teach them how to roll a blade and stuff. And they want to turn that into houses now. Well, I think they are going to, and I think it's a bit sad. Well, there's new housing estates everywhere that's being built, and it's like getting rid of all the countryside. You don't get to see all the views because there's all houses everywhere. You can't really go anywhere because there's loads of people. Well, it's good for the people how things have changed, and I think it's good that the collieries have gone because all this greenery is beautiful now. It's, it's good for a lot of things. It's good for a lot of things, I think, now. So I just hope that it keeps as it is and they keep the forest and everything, because it's just so nice. Mm. Yeah, green space, isn't it? <laughs>